can see the depth in centimeter to the face. So if I move closer to the camera, we can see that now I'm 30 centimeters away from the camera. Hey guys, and welcome to a new video on this computer vision tutorial. So in this video here, we're going to do depth estimation to different kinds of faces that we're detecting in the image. So we're going to combine depth estimation that we did with the monocular camera and deep learning from one of the previous tutorials. And then we're going to combine that with the face detector from MediaPipe because with the MediaPipe face detector, we actually like get a really fast face detector even on the CPU. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description here. You can come join the channel, chat with us about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee and everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. So thank you guys. So now we're going to jump straight into the video studio code here and I'm going to go over the code where we're actually like combining um, the MIDAS and the deep neural network to estimate depth by a monocular camera and how we can actually like combine that with the media pipe face detector. So first of all here, we're just going to import CV2 and media pipe as MP. And then we're also going to import time here. So we're actually like going to time our program or like our application here. So we can then get like how many FPS do we get when we run this algorithm here where we're both combining like deep learning for doing the depth estimation, but also deep learning for uh, doing the actual face detection. So first of all, we're going to set up our face detector as we know from the media pipes uh, tutorials. If you want to know more details about uh, the, the different kind of lines of code here and how to set up the media pipe face detector, and also all the other different kind of media pipe detectors. We both have like face meshes, like how we can create like Sorva point cloud um, with the media pipe. We also have 3D object detection and stuff like that. So make sure to check those videos out if you want to know like how we can set up really easy and really efficient uh, face detectors, mesh detectors, even holistic detectors. Like so we can track different kind of like features, like for example, your arm, your shoulder, and your legs and so on. So here we're going to set up our path model here. So just the path that we have to our models, as you know, from um, from the deep learning uh, monocular log camera solution. So these are just the paths here and then we can set up the network here for our depth estimation. So we're both operating with the Midas ver uh, version 2.1, the large model and the small model. If you only have a CPU, um, you should definitely go for like a small model here, as you will see in the end of the video. At least if you want like some sort of re real time applications, um, we will lack some accuracy with the small model, but it is, it is also like way faster than the large model. But if you're running your application on a GPU, uh, definitely go with the large model. You get way more accuracy um, as we're going to see as well. But if you're only using the CPU and in my example, we only get one FPS here uh, with the large network, but it doesn't really matter if you're only going to do the depth estimation like per image and you don't really have a real time application that needs more than one frame per second. If you want to know how we can set up uh, OMSV here with TPU support, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, I also have videos about that here on the channel. So check that out. It works both for C++ and Python. So here we're going to load in the DNN module here from the DNN mo um, model here from the DNN module in OpenCV. So we're just going to set our model equal to CV2.DNN and then we're going to read in the net from this path that we're specified and we can both specify the small model and the large model. First of all, we're just going to check if our model is empty. If it's empty, we're just printing out like we could not load the neural network and we should definitely check the path because this is a very common error. Um, when we're loading in either like images, models, and so on, it is that we have not specified the correct path. And then we're trying to debug and find errors in a program when, when like all it is, is just a path that we have not specified correctly. So here we can set the preferable backend here for either like a CUDA backend. So if you have compiled or like built OMCV with GPU support, you can set this model set preferable backend and also preferable target here. So we'll then run on your uh, NVIDIA a CUDA GPU instead of the CPU, which will just speed up um, your process or like your application by a lot. Then we're going to have a function where we can actually like create this depth to distance. So this is just a measure that I did, uh, that I did here in the real world. So how we can actually like, um, translate our or like convert our depth map into like real distances in the real world. Uh, so we, you'll need to do that by yourself and actually like convert that because we will get values between zero and one from our depth map um, from the media's neural network, which is the output. So here we're just going to open up our webcam with the cap here equal to CV2 video capture as in all the other videos. So we're going to open up the webcam. Then we're going to open up our face detector here where we need to set like a minimum confidence score. So like how confident uh, should we be before we actually like detect this as a face. 
So we're just going to set the minimum de uh, detection confidence here to 0.6, and then we're just going to open it up with, as face detection. So we can then use that later on uh, when we actually like want to detect our faces. So here we have a while loop. So while our webcam is, is open, we're just going inside of this while loop here over and over, keep reading in images from our webcam. Down on the bottom here, we just have this uh, if statement. So if we hit Q um, at any time on our keyboard while our application is running, it will just go out of the while loop and it will release our webcam and then our program will, uh, will terminate. We also have this um, timer here. So inside here, we're going to start a timer and then at the end of the program, we're also going to end the timer just to get the number of frames per seconds that it actually like takes to run all of this code here that I'm going to go through now, which is where we're combining the media pipe face detector with the depth uh, with the depth estimation from the monocular camera. So it's actually like really nice that we can get depth depth estimations from a monocular camera because we're then using deep learning where uh, otherwise we will need a stereo vision setup uh, and we won't get actually like that high accuracy compared to when we're using deep learning now for creating these depth maps. So here we're just going to read in our image from a webcam and it will store the image in this im variable. Then first of all, we need to convert our image from BGR to RGB because OMSV is loading in the images and working with images in BGR, but uh, the media pipe solution is working with the images in RGB and, uh, and um, the, the media's neural network is also working with the images in, uh, in the RGB order. So here we're going to process our image and find the faces with the media pipe. So to actually like just be able to, to find the images and get the results for a face detector, we're just going to have our face detection, which was the face detector that we created up here. So then we're just going to uh, have this dot process and then we just need to pass in our image and then it will do a forward pass of our image. It will do all the detections of faces in that image that we passed to this face detector and all the results will be stored in this result variable over here to the left. Then when we have the results, we can go into this if statement. So if we have any detections in our image and we're actually detecting faces, then we're going to have a for loop that's just running through all the detection in images. Uh, if we, for example, have multiple, um, multiple faces in the image, it will go through all of those detections and it will also assign an ID to each of the individual faces that it's detecting in the image. Then we're going to use this MP drawer that we that we initialized up in the start of the program, and which it is just like how we can draw the actual detections on the image. So we're just going to do that here. And then we're going to get the bounding box here. So inside of this results, we can actually like go into each of the individual detections, and then we can get the location data. And then we actually like just have an attribute or like a variable here uh, that is called the relative bounding box. So we'll get the bounding box uh, around the face, which we'll just store in this B box variable that we can then use uh, use later on to actually like get the boundary box for our image because the boundary box here will be uh, will be normalized. So we have values between zero and one, and then we need to convert that back uh, to our image, which is why we need to get our height, width, and also the channels here um, of our image. So here we're just going to create the boundary box for our image where we're just scaling our values with the width and height. Uh, to all the boundary box values or like the pixel values in our boundary box. Then we need to get the center point because when we're going to, to actually like get the depth uh, to our face, we're just going to choose to, to get the depth to the center point. We could also choose to get the, 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 like, the distance to like the whole face or all the areas or all the pixels inside of the boundary box and then take probably like the average of that, which will give a bit, better result. But this is also fairly good. We can just get the center point or like the nose of um of our detective face then we're going to print out the, the detection score on the image as well so how certain are we that this is actually like a face that we're detecting in the image so this was all here for the face detector we're now detecting the faces and we'll get the boundary box so now let's go down here to the depth map from the neural network from the media's uh, neural network then we know that we need to first of all we need to create this blob here from the input image and we can either do it for a large image or a small image, depending on uh, what, what neural network we're using, if we're using the large or the small model. And the only difference here is that the, the dimensions of the image is just reduced um, in the small image here. And we also need to make sure uh, that this is actually like um, a square image instead of, and instead of like uh, our images that we get in from the webcam. So we'll lose some information because we're actually like uh, compressing our image and then we're also downscaling our image uh, by a lot so we will lose a bit of information but we will still get really nice uh, results 
So here we're just going to create this block. We're just going to pass in all the information here. I've been through all, all of these different kinds of things and what it does and so on in, in, in the other video. So go check that out if you want to know what's going on here in details. But here we're just going to create this block from the input image. Then we need to set our input here to the model. Where we're just going to have this model dot set input. And then we're going to set our blob here um, as the input that we just created. Then we can do a forward pass in our model by just calling model dot forward. And then it will do the forward pass here of our blob through uh, or like the blob or our image through the model. And then we'll, the output would actually like be the step map, uh, which we can also get down here. And then we need to resize it. And then at the end here, we're normalizing our depth map. So we get values between zero and one. And then we're going to actually like convert that depth map here or like the values here from the depth map to a distance in the real world here um, in my room with the function that we did up in the, in the start of the program. So to actually get the depth to the face, uh, we need, first of all, we need to, of course, convert our colors back for the image. So we're just going to convert it back from RGB to BQR so we can display it later on in OpenCV here. So to actually get the depth to the face, we will just have this variable depth phase, which is equal to the depth map. And then we'll just take the, the, the center point that we actually like got from the face detection. So we're just going to take the middle point, uh, the middle point in our face, and then we're going to find that point in our depth map because that will be the value or like the depth that we got from the media's neural network. And we'll just store that, uh, that variable or like that value in the depth phase here. So it will just be a single value for that single point that we're detecting. So if we were going to take all the pixels inside of the mounting box, we will then have a, like a list here of all the values uh, for the depth to, to, to those pixels. So now we're just going to convert it here from the depth to the distance where we just pass in the depth phase and they will we'll just override it here with the depth phase. So this will actually like be the actual distance, um, distance here to the face in meters. And then we're just going to print it out to the console here. We don't really need to do that because we're already putting it out here in the image as well. We're going to display here depth in centimeters. As we get in centimeters, we're just going to multiply it here with 100 because we get the values um, in meters when we call this function up here. We're going to just going to put it out in our timer because then we have done all the operations that we want to do on our image. We're calculating the number of frames per seconds and we're also printing out the number of frames per seconds. And then at the end here, the last two lines is just that we're showing our face detection and we're also showing the depth map. So we're showing both of the individual things uh, that we created, both the face detector and the depth map. And the only thing we need to do to actually like, uh, to like combine them is to find the center and then use that center point to find that exact same pixel location in our depth map. And then we're just going to map that um, as well here and just print it out. So now we're on the program here and see like what is actually like going on when we're running our program. We're now opening up the small model here. So first of all here, we can see that it is not only using the CPU. So turn the flow light here with the CPU. And it'll open up the program we can see down here. So first of all, we will get our, um, here we will get our depth map to the left. We get 10 frames per second. And we can see here that we're detecting the face with the media pipe solution. And at the bottom here, we can see the depth in centimeter to the face. So if I move closer to the camera, we can see that now I'm 30 centimeters away from the camera. And if I'm moving further away, like we can see that uh, we get a greater, uh, greater value down here. But we're working with the small model here. So our accuracy will be actually like not that good uh, again, because we're estimating the depth and it just takes some references in the image. So for example, now I'm going to put my hands up in the image and it will actually like think that my face is further away because my hands is closer to the camera. So we get some errors here as well. So now we can see that we get like more gray values compared to white values. And now we get like my face is around like one meter away from the camera, which is also maybe 80 centimeters. Like we can see now is more true than if I take my hands away because then we will just get these white pixels, uh, which will not really change that much when I'm moving closer to the camera. And if I'm moving further away here, we can see it still thinks that I am really close to the camera compared to if I have my hands up here and I'm moving away. Then the values actually like makes more sense because but this is because we're running on the small model um on the cpu here where we get around 10 fps so it's actually like really nice really cool we can still use it if we don't have a stereo vision setup where we can just use the stereo vision setup to just get one point um in our image and it also is also really useful if we want to get like multiple points for example here if you want to both detect my hands and the face 
then we will actually like have a more uh, like a better indicator by using this depth map here compared to for example um, stereo vision but if we only have like one point we want to detect we could probably use stereo vision if we have like two cameras that we can use for that or a stereo vision setup so this is not really like this is really easy to set up we just load in our model uh, use media pipe and then we just run a program it will, it will run we don't need to do all the different kind of stuff that we need to do with the revision with camera calibration uh, do tri triangulation in the image as well uh, 3d image image information and stuff like that it's really easy to set up it's really nice and if you're going to use the whole depth map here this is just a really nice and really cool solution so just to end the, uh, the video off here i'm just going to show you for the large model it's not really efficient but i'm just going to show you here as well so if you have uh, GPU support, you, you should definitely use that. I'll ma probably make a video as well where we go over it in C++ where I have compiled it and set it up with GPU support um, in OpenCV. So here we're just going to comp these out, doesn't really matter. And then we're going to load in the large model instead and I'll get around like one frame per second when we're going to run this program. So again, we're using the CPU. It will open up the program. We get like around zero here because we're just taking the integer value uh, of that and I have fairly, uh, fairly amount open here on my computer. But we see the depth map here is actually like better. We get a better uh, accuracy over here on the depth in centimeters. If I move, move closer to the camera here, it takes a bit, but we can see now it, it is 34. And if I move further away, we can see that it, it, it goes up faster, which is actually like more true than with the small model. So our accuracy is just way better. If I try to put my hands up here, it will take a bit more time, but we can see that uh, it still thinks that I'm further away than my hands, which is also true because this is just a depth estimation from a monocular -like camera and it just takes like into account what is close to the camera and what is like further away and in the background. So if I take my hands up, it will think that that is the closest object to the, to the camera, where if I don't have my hands up, my face will be the closest, um, closest uh, object to the image or like to the camera at least. So we can use this for a lot of different kind of things and we get better accuracy here with the large model, of course, but our number of frames per second is also uh, degrading a lot. So if you're running a real-time application, go for the small model or the GPU, or if you only want to do it on one image uh, or like this is okay if you only want to do it like once in a while when you load in an image or like take an image with your camera for like a specific application or project, you can definitely use this here and you'll get more and better, better accuracy. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to subscribe button and notification under the video here because we have some really nice and cool um, projects and videos coming up here on the channel. Also hit the like button if you like the content here and you want more in the future uh, because it just really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'll link to one of the tutorials up here that I have on my channel, either the computer vision one or the deep learning one or else I'll see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.